Hello there, welcome to Stay at Home Cinema, brought to you by TIFF and Crave. We're streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and at tiff.net slash stay at home. I'm Cameron Bailey, I'm the artistic director and co-head of TIFF, and I want to remind you there is no crying in baseball. Tonight we're watching League of Their Own, starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. In a few minutes I'll be joined by actor, gender equity advocate, and one of the stars of the film, Gina Davis. First, some shout outs. I am speaking to you from Indigenous land, so I want first to shout out all Indigenous storytellers and their communities from coast to coast to coast, all frontline workers who are working right now to keep us safe and healthy and fed. And uh, TIFF gets a lot of support from uh, government, so I want to thank all levels of government, the government of Canada, the province of Ontario, and the city of Toronto. I also want to thank TIFF's donors and members, maybe you're one of them, for keeping us going. Thank you. And a massive shout out to our corporate partners, including our lead sponsor, Bell, and major sponsors, RBC, Visa, and L'Oreal Paris. Now, L'Oreal Par Paris celebrates women in their leading roles through their Women of Worth program and initiatives to democratize the red carpet. It's a perfect choice for tonight's film with this incredible group of leading women led by the incomparable Penny Marshall. And they've teamed up with us on this edition of Stay at Home Cinema to give away a L'Oreal Paris prize pack. And you can find the link below to enter to win before midnight tomorrow. I'm so glad we're able to present a League of Their Own to you tonight. It's a classic, satisfying underdog story about a women's baseball team. And it gets across a strong message about gender equity that's accessible to just about anybody. My wife and I watched it recently with our son when he was nine, and it still connects. Director Penny Marshall took on this true story of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League after she had directed Big and Awakenings. It reunited her with Tom Hanks and gave her a story that would mean so much to gener generations of girls and women and boys and men who love sports and want to see sports be an equal playing field. The cast here is incredible. In addition to Hanks, you've got Rosie O'Donnell, Madonna, Bill Pullman, and John Lovitz turn up, and in the pivotal role, Gina Davis. Two years ago, Gina Davis came to the Toronto International Film Festival with her documentary, This Changes Everything, about the gender gap pardon me, but the gender gap in the entertainment industry. She also spoke at her Share Her Journey rally that year, which saw thousands and thousands of people on the street in Toronto, and she gave a very clear message. Change how women and girls are represented on screen, and we can change the world. Share Her Journey is Tiff's commitment to increasing opportunities for women behind and in front of the camera. You can learn more about that at tiff.net slash sharehejourney. And now, Oscar winner for The Accidental Tourist, a legend for Thelma and Louise, and the eternal role model for her Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media and her work here in A League of Their Own. Gina Davis, welcome to Stay at Home Cinema. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, glad to, to have you here. Yeah. Now, A League of Their Own is, what, 28 years old. There's a generation that was not born when it first came out. What do you think it has to say now to girls and young women discovering it for the first time? Uh, you know what's interesting? When I mean, when we made it that long ago, I don't think we had any idea that movies were going to last as long as they did. You know that there would be, uh, you know, videos and then DVD and uh, and streaming. And so the interesting thing for me has been I have pretty much the same number of girls and young women uh, recognizing me from that movie and telling me you know, I play sports because wow. of that movie uh, as I did you know, almost 30 years ago. So, uh, so it's been, uh, it's been wonderful to be part of something that um, is not just a movie, but seems to have inspired a lot of uh, women and girls to take up sports. Has it been a while since you've watched it yourself? Oh yeah, I've watched it a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of the, I'm a rare actor who likes to watch their movies. Yeah, many actors refuse to watch their own movies, but no, you, you don't. I'm glad you, you actually can stand to watch yourself on the big screen. That's great. Yeah, I forget about that it's me. And, uh, uh, no, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, huh. I've seen it a what, lot. What does the film mean to you personally, apart from your being in it and everything, when you watch it as a story, what does it mean to you? Well, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, wonderful and um, uh, and profound in some ways to work with that many women, um, to have the story be about 
uh, women and their experiences and, and have such a big ensemble of women. And uh, um, it was just wonderful um, to, to be in that kind of environment. And we were all so supportive of each other. You know, it was interesting that we had a lot of press come and visit the set and every single interviewer at some point would say, so there's a lot of women on this set, lots of cat fighting. Oh man, really? <laughs> that was, that's what I said, oh man, really? Come on. Uh, yeah, so uh, I definitely set them straight about that. Oh, the other thing they wanted to know was, they conspiratorial say, uh, conspiratorially say, is this a feminist movie? And I said, no. <laughs> it's a feminist. It is. <laughs> you said it was a feminist movie. I'm not right. even trying to hide it. Yes, <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Big deal. Yes, women could also play baseball. That's the message. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know. How did you come to be cast as Dottie Henson? Uh, because I had been a professional baseball. No, I. Uh, <laughs> I had never played. I never played baseball or any sport, so it wasn't because of my uh, incredible athletic prowess. I don't know. I just, you know, Penny thought of me, so mm -hmm. I said yes immediately. I mean, how much fun! But you did become an athlete later. This is still a story I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. But as you were already a well-established Oscar-winning uh, actor, and you took up a sport later in life. Yes. So. I think it was first inspired by League of Their Own. I had to learn how to play baseball. I had to play the best baseball player anyone has ever seen. So that was daunting, not having ever played a sport before. But um, but the coaches started saying, you know, you have some real untapped athletic ability. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. And then uh, for a couple other movies, I had to learn uh, sword fighting and horseback riding and Taekwondo and ice skating and a, a whole lot of stuff. And uh, I was kind of good at all of them. And then I thought, you know what? I would like to learn a sport in the real way and not the movie version of it. Because mm -hmm. as good as I actually got at playing baseball, uh, whenever my character hit a home run, and I only hit home runs in this movie, you may know. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of ball players like that. It's the movies. Uh, so I would do, of course, the, the close-up of the mighty swing, and then the props guys had a giant slingshot, and they would send the ball hurtling over the fence for me. Uh, so anyway, so I thought, let me see if I could actually play a real sport the real way. And um, and I, I just happened upon uh, archery. I was watching the Olympics uh, in Atlanta on TV, and uh, and I was I saw the archery, and I thought, wow, that is so beautiful, and it's it's, you know, it's a very dramatic uh, sport, and I wonder if I would be good at that. And so at 41, I got, I got a, found a teacher, a coach, and uh, became utterly obsessed with it. And then uh, two and a half years later, I was a semifinalist in the Olympic trials. So, uh, <laughs> so you could have thrown this all aside and gone to become an Olympic archer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and you make so much money doing that, too, by the way. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to ask uh, maybe uh, one or two more questions, but we have some questions from TIFF members and donors, and we can also take some live questions, so comment wherever you're watching if you've got a question for Gina Davis. Here is one from Jeremy Prue, who's a TIFF donor, and he asks, uh, as an athlete yourself, how seriously did you take your baseball training prior to filming the movie? Oh, I, I really took it very, very seriously. I mean, um, I, I did have to pull off looking like a, like an incredibly talented ball player and uh uh and the funny thing was to me that um after the movie came out i got a lot of requests for did i want to be in this or that exhibition game you know with the major league ball players and everything mm -hmm. I just you know join in <laughs> I was like, are you insane <laughs> <laughs> Right. You I were just to, really good. Yeah. Do I want to prove whether or not I can, in real life, play baseball? I don't think so. <laughs> and, uh, can I hit off a major league pitcher? Also don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that people think I could have. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, ben White, a TIFF member, asks, what's the fondest memory you have from being on set? Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, I think it was just the general feeling on, on set. Um, we shot in this little town, Evansville, Indiana, and built our own little ballpark there. And the townspeople would come and be the uh, the fans in the stand, the extras. And it was in the middle of summer. It was like 90 degrees every day. And uh, uh, we took it upon ourselves to try to keep the crowd entertained. Uh, and, and Tom Hanks would put on puppet shows. He'd put, a, he'd put hats on baseball bats and, and do puppet shows over the dugout. And, and Rosie would lead people and uh, cheers and, and, and songs and stuff. So uh, that, was, that was really a fun part of it, feeling like a part of a team, basically. Mm. Um, here's a question uh, that just came in from Bettina Buon on Facebook. Uh, did Dottie drop the ball on purpose? Oh, you know, I've never told anybody, but why don't I tell you now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it will go to my grave with me. Okay. Oh, All right. so that yeah. remains a secret. I'm the only one who knows. All right. Um, here is another one from Lara Bulger. How has Hollywood changed since A League of Their Own came out? Okay. So the shortest possible answer, answer is not much. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, after that movie came out, um, all the press was saying, because it was a big hit at the time, and all the press was saying, okay, this is going to change everything. Now this, we're going to see so many more movies about women's sports, movies starring women, da, da, da. and I thought, you know, hot dog, this is great. I'm part of something that changes everything. And uh, the next movie about women in sports was maybe never... Uh, I mean, it, it, nothing happened <laughs> from that. And uh, uh, what I noticed as the years went by, there would be other movies starring women that, that did very well. And, and they would, the press would again say, now everything has changed, of course, mm -hmm. and, and nothing would change. So the, the number of movies starring women and the percentage of women in films has not really improved that much in a very long time. So, um, so that that was kind of sad to, you know, to discover that. Really that well, moment. I want to ask you uh, in this light about your institute, the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, because you track this kind of information, this data, and you have been for for years. So, what can you tell us? I mean, is progress being made? There's been so much talk about changing uh, the, just the ratio, the, the, the equity in Hollywood. Yeah, so I started the Institute about 15 years ago and, and yeah, we've done all this research in order to uh, go directly to creators and share it with them privately. Instead of trying to just educate the public about this, we'd rather influence the creators. So, um, so actually recently we have uh, had some major change and uh, reached two of the goals that we set for ourselves. Mm -hmm. In television made for children, we found out last year that uh, there are uh, now an equal number of female lead characters as male uh, lead characters, which is a big, big change from when we started. Mm -hmm. And then also at the beginning of this year, we found out that in family rated films, uh, female leads are also at parity with male leads. So um, this is big, you know, I mean, that's the goal. Show people, women and girls take up half the space. Um, we've made a lot of progress with uh, people of color and other, you know, um, marginalized groups, but, uh, but haven't got really to, uh, you know, reflect the population as it is yet. Mm -hmm. But we're making progress. Um when you gave your speech uh, at the Toronto Film Festival in, in 2018, you made an interesting point, which is that when you would take some of this information into meetings uh, in Hollywood, people would think that there had been progress made when there hadn't been. There yeah. was a kind of a mistaken impression that, that things were getting better. Right. Why do you think that is? Why do people have such a kind of disconnect between the, the reality and what they, what's in their minds? You know, it's really stunning. And I had no idea about it until we started doing all this, but, uh, 
people just naturally want to gravitate toward, well, that's that's been fixed, right? That's addressed. I don't want to have to talk about this again or keep talking about it. Um, and uh, the, the creators of kids' uh, television and movies were absolutely sure that parody had been reached mm -hmm. and uh, and that they were doing it themselves. So like, we're the ones doing this. <laughs> they saw the numbers, they were horrified. And uh, so that's why the research has been so valuable for us is to show them, you know, in, in black and white, what's what they're really doing. And then they really want to change it. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have to kind of struggle to balance your work as an actor, your work in film and your work with the Institute? Obviously both very important to you, but how did you come up with the, the right balance? Um, you know, I don't really put a lot of thought into it. If I get, if I get a, a job and it takes up all my time, it takes up all my time, uh, you know, and uh, otherwise I'm 100% working with, with the Institute. Um, so, uh, um, I just, you know, I, I think balance is kind of overrated. I just either do all of one thing or all of the other thing. Or That's how you became, thing. almost became an Olympic archer, I suppose. <laughs> just go full on. That's right. And you also have a film festival. Yes. Yes, I have my own film festival. Uh, it's called uh, BFF, Bentonville Film Festival. Uh, usually happens every May. Uh, this year we're going to be virtual um, in, in August. Uh, and uh, the it, uh, I started it with the goal of um, championing women and diversity in film. And uh, in order to be qualified to be in the competition or even be shown at our festival, uh, you have to meet certain criteria. Like um, there's about seven different ways you can qualify and you need four of them to be in. So, uh, female lead or person of color, director, uh, same thing, crew, the entire cast, uh, producer, all, you know, a lot of different ways you can qualify. But, uh, but it has to be very specifically meet certain criteria. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you about the, the league that the, the story is based on, the real All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. And I know that you and, and Penny Marshall would have been um, drawing on their experiences to help tell the story. But, you know, what kind of contact did you have with women who were part of that league in the, in the 40s? Oh, yeah, we got to meet them a lot. Um, they There were some that were on the set as, as advisors, you know, constantly on the set and uh, we met a lot of them and uh, what inspiring people, you know, I mean, they were still better at baseball in their <laughs> than we were uh, by, by all means. And uh, uh, it was wonderful to have that research I mean, resource. This was like, for many of them, the high point of their lives, you know, to be able to do something so extraordinary that was so unheard of, you know, that they would ever be able to have a chance to be professional baseball players. And uh, it, for their for the rest of their lives, it really meant a lot. Mm -hmm. Sports still is a, such a contested ground uh, for women, I think, especially in terms of equal pay. You look at the women's American soccer team, for instance, which did so well in the World Cup compared to the men. Right. Uh, you look at uh, you know, Serena Williams or Simone Biles or so many other athletes who seem to have undue pressure put on them and, and how they look and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Are you hopeful at all in terms of just how women in sports are represented? Is there, do you see any change there? Well, you know, we have so many um, uh, wonderfully outspoken uh, female sports stars now who are, you know, really out there talking about this and, and working on it um, uh, that, uh, you know, I think we will make some progress. It's very slow, unfortunately. Um, uh, so many really old fashioned ideas about, mm. about that, you know, sort of this entrenched thing that men have to make more money than women. Um, but uh, like you said, that we have incredible female stars now. So, um, so I'm I'm optimistic, but uh, you know, it's going to take a while. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Since uh, since Billy Jean and Bobby Riggs, you know, yeah, things should have changed more by now. Thank you for all the work you're doing to help make some changes on screen and for this movie as well. It really is a classic. I could watch it over and over again. 
We're going to go to the film uh, in a few minutes. We're going to start at 7.30 p.m. on the East Coast, 4.30 on the West Coast in Canada. We're watching on Crave. If you're elsewhere, just find A League of Their Own wherever you can. Press play at 7.30 Eastern time. We're going to be tweeting along. And we use the hashtag uh, TIFF uh, at home. Gina Davis, thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.